Hello there, welcome to the channel. Today we're going to talk about UI flows and the February 2020 update, which sees the introduction of unattended bots. Let's go. So let's talk a little bit about why this content is important. So it's important to know that there's two different modes when it comes to UI flows. There's attended and unattended. Previously, any of the content that I've shown on this channel has been attended. And as of February 2020, that's when Microsoft introduced the unattended capabilities. Now, when we have attended UI flows, we have a user that's logged in. And what's going to happen is that they may invoke this bot to go perform a set of tasks and provide a response back to that user. But do know that that user is logged on to an active session on their device. Now, it still could be a server, could be a desktop, could be a laptop. That doesn't really matter, but the user must be logged on. And so this can create some opportunities when you have like hybrid scenarios where perhaps a user might invoke the bot, the bot will go out, perform a series of tasks, provide a result back, maybe needing some sort of acknowledgement or approval to go fulfill some remaining steps. That would be a good use case for an attended bot. Now, if we shift gears and start talking about unattended UI flows, this is when a user is logged out. In fact, we're going to talk about this in an upcoming slide. The user can't be logged on and cannot have an active session on a device for that bot to actually spin up and start running. So the user must be logged out. But this creates scenarios where we have scale out scenarios. So for example, you might have a process this, that does not require any human intervention and maybe it's invoices coming into a mailbox. And for every invoice, you need to spin up an Azure VM and then basically have an unattended bot go fulfill a series of tasks that lends itself to the unattended UI flow scenario. Now I'm not going to dive deep into this because this is always a slippery slope, but do note that there are some differences from a licensing perspective. There's a, it's very different between attended UI flows and unattended UI flows. So I would encourage you go out to the Power Automate blog. Charles Lamana has a blog post where he describes some of the differences between the licensing for these two different capabilities. I will include a link in the description, so go ahead and look for that. Okay, so let's dive deeper. Before we dive deeper into the content, I wanted to let you know about an emerging community found at serverlessnotes.com. This is a community resource that covers best practices, tips, and latest announcements built on contributions by technology enthusiasts from around the globe. On serverlessnotes.com, you'll find content related to Power Automate, Azure Logic Apps, Azure Service Bus, Azure Functions, and much, much more. Serverlessnotes.com is brought to you by Serverless 360, a portal that is focused on operations and support for Microsoft Azure serverless resources. Now, this is a complementary tool to the Azure portal, and it helps organizations in supporting Azure serverless applications. You can find out more about Serverless 360 at serverless360.com. Okay, so if you've previously used UI flows, so perhaps you might have downloaded the UI flow app when UI flows first came out after Ignite or perhaps even in the new year. So you do need to update the UI flow app in order to get unattended to work. So here's a link where you can go ahead and find more information about that upgrade, you'll want to click on this link here to go ahead and retrieve the latest version of that app. I will include this link inside of the description for this specific video. And the reason why this is important is that you do need to check on the allow remote connections on this machine in order to enable unattended UI flows. So this was something that um, wasn't super obvious to me when I was just doing this. I know typically people will quickly, you know, click next, 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 but something to be aware of. Now, if you are downloading this UI flow app for the first time, this checkbox won't even show up. Like it'll just be enabled by default. And so I was sort of in this mixed mode where I was upgrading one machine that had the gateway and had the UI flow app and I got prompted with this. And then I spun up a brand new Azure VM, which we're going to see here in a little bit. And I ran through this install and this didn't exist at all. So just something to be aware of. But if you are updating, make sure you enable that if you plan on using unattended flows. But all in all, the process pretty seamless. I uh, had no issues. Sort of next, next, next. A few minutes later, everything's up and ready to go. 
Now, troubleshooting tips. So this is important information because I even got hung up. I didn't read the documentation, my fault. But the benefit is I'm sharing this with you so uh, I should save you a little bit of time as well. Now, when you have unattended flows, this is super, super important. The unattended flows will run on devices with the screen locked, which is cool, that's fine. But if we look at this next couple bullets, this is where it becomes very important. Windows 10 devices cannot run unattended if there's an active Windows user session on the device, even a locked one. You will receive this error, cannot execu execute UI flow. There's a locked or inactive Windows user session on the target device. So what this means is that the machine needs to be on. It obviously needs to be on the network, but the user can't be logged on. Uh, you need to lock out, log out uh, in order for that session to be created because what's going to happen is we're going to provide configuration when we create our connection that's actually going to log into a machine. And this is what makes unattended flows pretty special in the sense that you can now scale these out because the UI flow is going to basically reach out to a, a targeted machine and then go ahead and log in for you and you don't have to worry about that. You don't have to manage that. And so this can happen while you sleep or you know, completely while you focus on other things. This is part of the true value of having robotic process automation. Now Windows Server, same sort of idea. You can have a locked Windows user session open. It's the same user as the UI flow is supposed to run as. Um, like It's sort of the same situation. So you want to be cognizant of that, of not having active sessions when trying to run these bots. Now, attended mode is this is where the requirements are completely flipped, where you have to have an active Windows user session that matches the same name of the user that's configured in your connection. And when we get into the demo, I'll show you that, but it's essentially like your machine name, backslash, username, and then password. So the same credentials that you would use if you were to log onto that machine, either locally or through a remote desktop session. Now, another thing to be aware of is when an attended UI flow starts running on the target machine, Microsoft recommends avoiding interactions with your mouse and keyboard, which is true because if you think about this, the bot is essentially driving keystrokes and basically mouse clicks that you've recorded. So if you start sort of taking over that, that mouse cursor, you're going to have undesirable results because the bot won't be able to cleanly be able to execute. So a couple tips, pay attention to these. These will save you some time um, as you go through and explore these capabilities. Okay, here's the scenario we're gonna go through. This is a very simple example, but the, the point of this video is not to talk about sort of the UI flow process that's running. It's more about talking about the difference between attended and unattended uh, interactions. So we've just got a, a very simple flow. This is gonna be a, a power automate, a manually trigger a flow scenario and what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and retrieve rows in this case I only have a single row but uh, this could have many rows of currencies that we want to go ahead and convert and then what we're going to do is we're going to reach out to UI flow which will invoke a bot to go ahead and scrape the converted currency value for us uh, from bing.com and then update our excel spreadsheet and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this in both modes. I'm going to run it in the attended mode when I'm logged on to a virtual machine inside of Azure. Now, do note, you don't have to have Azure in place. I just felt when you're trying to do the unattended scenario, you really need to have another machine that you're not logged into back to some of the commentary I provided you on the previous slide. So with that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip over and log into my Azure VM, and we'll talk more about the scenario there and we'll start to run it. So here I am I'm in the Azure portal and as I mentioned before you don't have to have Azure. It's a great way to test out your unattended UI flows and I think in the real world if you were to go ahead and actually provision UI flow and unattended bots more specifically Azure is a great place to be able to run your bots um, because you only pay for what you use. So if it's a scenario where you may not need your bots running all of the time, perhaps just like say during business hours, you could have your VMs running only during business hours and only pay for what you need and then shut them down at night. And that's essentially what I've got going on here. I just have this VM that's shut down at night. 
Now, what I'll do is I'm going to go ahead and just flip screens here. And now what you can see is I am on my Azure VM. And this is, I'm obviously logged into Flow. I have my Excel spreadsheet that we're gonna see here shortly. And you can see I have an on-premise data gateway that is running on this machine. And so that's uh, obviously you need to have the on-premise gateway installed. Look at some of my prior videos if you're wanting to know more information about that. Now in my flow, as I mentioned before, it's quite simple. We're gonna manually trigger it. We're gonna list rows inside of a table in an Excel spreadsheet, which is here. And then what we're gonna do is we are going to invoke a UI flow. Now this is a piece of new functionality right here, this run mode. And this gives us the ability to specify if we want attended versus unattended. And that's important. And then also to note is connections. Um, when you get prompted for a connection, this is where you go ahead and provide the information about your machine, the password. Um, obviously you need to have a gateway installed on that machine. So, you know, here are my gateways called Azure RPA and I would provide some additional details and then I would go ahead and be able to use that connection and it'll use these credentials when trying to log on to my machine, whether that's in attended mode or unattended mode. So I'm gonna cancel that because I have a connection that is already working well for me. So let's go ahead, let's run this. This will run in attended mode. So we will see that our screen pops up and that we will see in real time that our UI flow is running. And uh, just one thing before, just to make sure we've got no smoke and mirrors. Uh, here we've got a converted value that is empty, which is what we want. So let's go ahead, let's test. And this will take about 30 seconds. So I'll probably uh, pause the recording here just uh, so you're not just watching some green checkboxes being executed. Okay, and now we can see that our process has been completed successfully. Let's just head over to Excel and sure enough, our value is prompted. Wow, the Canadian dollar is getting hammered. That sucks. Okay, so that was on Azure. Now what we're gonna do, let's go ahead and just edit it here. I'm going to flip this switch and we're going to now use unattended mode. I'm going to save this uh, flow. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna close out, close out, and then I'm going to log out of this machine. So I'm gonna sign out. So do note that this machine is still going to be running in Azure, but it is going, there's not gonna have any logged on session. So here I'm in the Azure portal and I'm just hitting refresh. And sure enough, my machine is still running. Okay, now what I've done is I have on my local machine, the machine that I'm recording this video on, I've opened up a new web browser. I'm logged on to Power Automate using the same credentials. I'm looking at the exact same flow that I showed you before. We can see that we're currently in unattended mode, which is great. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go and test this flow. The difference is, is we won't see that dialogue pop up, that black window that then just kicks off and we have Selenium that's driving our, our GUI. That's not gonna happen because that's all happening in the back end inside of Azure. So once again, I'll probably pause the video just to avoid you just staring at blank uh, space here, but do note that this process is running inside of Azure. Okay, so we can see that it took a little bit longer to complete, but we do have a successful execution. Uh, here we're seeing about two minutes, and if we flip back, yeah, so one minute, 45 seconds in total. Let's just refresh, just make sure we got the latest. And versus 34 seconds when we ran it attended. So this was attended, 34 seconds. This was unattended. 
this was one minute 45 seconds now I guess you can ex expect some some differences here because here I was already logged on you know everything was spun up everything was ready to run I didn't have to wait for other services to load whereas here it was truly like a clean start it had to log in services obviously spin up and, and start up when you log into the machine and then it ran but the important point is that it did run it was successful and we've demonstrated now both unattended and attended modes so that's the video for today i hope you enjoyed it uh, if you're not following me on social media i would ask that you do let's uh, have a conversation let's have some dialogue you can find me on twitter with the handle of at Weirzy. naturally you're watching my youtube video i appreciate that if you haven't gone ahead and subscribed i encourage you to do so i'm going to be putting out way more videos uh, related to power automate and the power platform also if you do like this video please go ahead give me a thumbs up and like it i do have some udemy courses if you're interested in additional training on either power automate or logic apps and you can find some discount codes at the following link so thanks for tuning in and i'll see you next time on the channel stay safe